Hello, I'm Chris Ray. Welcome to the third issue of Inside Rugby. This month, we look at 1982, the year when Kieran Fitzgerald's Irish side battled their way to a triple crown that had eluded them since 1949. Inspired by the genius of Ollie Campbell, they beat Wales at Lansdowne Road to end a run of seven consecutive defeats. A fortnight later at Twickenham, they beat England 16-15 and found only Scotland now standing in their path to glory. 21 points later from the boot of Campbell, and the prize was theirs. However, their dream of a grand slam was shattered when they lost 22-6 to France in the final match of the season. Well, England, who have a tremendous record over Scotland over the last five years or so. Scotland not having beaten them since 1976. It's the same pack for the fifth international in a row. Big onus on the tight five there. Three British Lions in the side, one of whom of course holds the reins again, Andy Irvin, captain for the tenth time. Laidlaw, Rutherford with the drop goal. It's high enough and it's straight enough. Scotland ahead. Alan Richards has got an arm out there and it may well be to indicate that a Scot has infringed the foul player provisions. And uh, Ken Rowlands has awarded the penalty. Now Paul Dodge with the left foot from that right side. Can he do what he did in 78? It looks high enough. It is a marvellous kick. A slightly sliced Gary Owen. Rose can be dangerous but well tackled there. However... There was a little bit of obstruction across the front of Rose, the referee has decided, and it's a penalty to the Scots. And the Irvin then. That's great. Rutherford from Laidlaw. Beautiful. Got by Winterbottom. Had it back inside. Laidlaw it was, but uh, holding it in, in the tackle. Some uh, bad nature shouting there as Dodge goes up. It doesn't put him off. Just up to half time now as England go for a half time lead. Steve Smith, well tackled by Laidlaw. But the Scots had drifted offside. Marcus Rose there. No, he struck that nicely. So England are ahead by nine points to six. Now it's Smith. Fed again to this uh, lively flank forward. Now it's out to Davies, switch there to Dodge. Dodge lost possession but Jevon saved it for him. Penalty against Colin Smart, the Newport prop for uh, obstructing a player who didn't have the ball. This could tie it at nine all, he's two metres inside his own half. Irvin, high, is it far enough? It is! And once more we've had the most dramatic finish to a Calcutta Cup match that you could ever imagine. A Welsh side with eight wins and a draw from their last ten matches against Ireland. And an Irish side with uh, that prolific point scorer Ollie Campbell in the pivot role. Very little in the combined weights. Ireland fractionally heavier. McGrath caught there by Terry Holmes and Willie Duggan picked up in front of his man. The referee decided that he'd prevented the opposition from gaining an advantage, and so it's a penalty to Wales. Gwyn Evans. Oh, he struck it well. Perfect. Fed back to McGrath. Out to Erwin. There's a chance for Ringland. Ringland going for the corner. It's a try. But it's worked back there to Holmes. Holmes! The try is given. Evans, cool and calm. Campbell. Campbell dummying and clean through. Oh, what a marvellous effort! Mustin has got the try. They managed to sneak one against the head. The Welshmen have got round on the other side. Now it's out from McGrath to Campbell. Campbell through. Lovely breakthrough there by Kiernan. Another try for Mosfit. Oh, that was brilliant. Holly Campbell slots it clean. 
He lifts his 100 points for Ireland. Now Moskine has it. Now it's John O'Driscoll. And the Welshman looked to me to be offside, and it's a penalty. This will give Ireland a handsome lead. It's dead straight, and he's done it. Referee hustles round, looks behind him. Holmes, Pierce with the drop goal. The referee's arm goes up, and the little man from Bridgend has done it again. Notice it's a very good scrummage. They've done well. Look at those great Duggan feet holding it in. He'll get a trial for Arsenal. Tottenham Hotspur if he carries on like that. Now he gives it to McGrath. Out to Finn. The foot was on the line, but it's a penalty to Ireland. As Oli Campbell tries to stretch the Irish lead. It looks good. It's perfect. One hundred and six points he scored for Ireland now in 13 internationals. And that, I think, is the best average that I can remember. And Ireland are ahead by 20 points to 12. France taking the Basque option. Six of the seven backs from the southwest corner of France, renowned for its attacking rugby. Wales, a testing day for Captain Gareth Davis returning after injury uh, against Ireland. France's 10 metre line. At the back there, Rodri Lewis alongside Reid, but it's Moriarty at the front with possession. Davis straight through to Guy Richards. And the destruction there against Wales. Perfect playing conditions, just a slight breeze. Salah from. What's a useful kick. Quite superb. Over the top, France penalised. It's well struck too. Three all. Eludes Lewis. Back for Martinez. Well won ball. Lescabura. Oh, not quite accurate, but it could work out useful. It has. Away goes Belasca. Belasca flipped on the Blanco. The first try. Oh, superb play by France. The try by Serge Blanco. In front of the posts is uh, Marc Salafran. Ready with a penalty, just so easy. For two more. Almost an early strike. And he's taken it again. But the scrummage is lowered. France have penalised. It's a penalty to Wales. No mistake at all. Ten metres out from the French goal line. They've gone over the top again and given the Wales a penalty. It's missed two. But he hasn't missed that one. Nine on it is. But it's a penalty to France now. Martinez then. That was late. The penalty given away by Kremashi, the prop forward. Three kicks, successful three missed. Can he put it level again? on to Lewis and now it's Ray Gravel, Gravel inside to Ackerman, Terry Holmes, yes! Wales take charge, France panic and kill the ball. This could put them seven points clear and it does. Foot went in. To think that midway through this second half, France was still ahead. That will do nicely. And it's an Irish team with only two of the back division who actually played in the 6 10 defeat from England a year ago. In the England side, there are four men of Lancashire in their back division. One of them, Tony Bond, returning for his sixth cap in place of the unlucky Paul Dodge. The pack contains the one new cap, Jim Siddall. Knocked back by Jevons. Through goes Duggan. Willie Duggan, the pirate from Blacklock, got through there and managed to force England to go offside. Campbell ducks it round. Super kick. Fitzgerald 
and it's McGrath and a great chance for McNeil. The try is given. That's Fillor. Tries to hold the pressure on. That was a good drive by England scrummage and they've caught the Irish offside. Rose then. Nice and easy. Lovely strike by Fitzgerald. McGrath. Again a little tap kick. Slaman had to take it. Caught by Ringland. Slattery was there. So was Campbell. The, the referee's arm has gone up for handling in the ruck and it's a penalty to Ireland. Stroked it well. Rose of England, England all round the uh, great Twickenham Stadium. Lifting at the line out. Rose then. Got it well. But it's Fitzgerald out to Campbell. Campbell inside to Slattery. Campbell again. Taken on by Duggan. McLaughlin caught there by Slemon. Driving for the line. The referee has given the try. And if Campbell slots this one well, who knows? Oh, he stroked it magnificently. What a kick. Wheeler throws back to McGrath. With a leaning on the shoulder there. Rose. Oh, he got it well, and it's another lovely kick. Want to use the back, yes. Taken there by Winterbottom. The whole of Russell School at Fleetwood would have gone up in the chairs there, but England still with a chance as Davis gives it out to Slemon. Slemon's in. Trying to go round as near to the post as possible. Marcus Rose. Oh, it's a beauty again. Keen on the left for Ireland. Willie Duggan went for it. Tones went in, but uh, a little bit of line-out obstruction. And that gives Ireland the chance to go into the lead. Ollie Campbell. Stroked it well. All the way. That's halfway. Lenehan has moved to number two this time, and Keane was at four. But uh, again, a bit of line-out obstruction. Ollie Campbell. Oh, it's a big kick. What a goal! Laid Laughlin break. Marvellous run out to Rutherford. Rutherford going for the line. This could be a superb try for Rutherford. What a breakout. Scottish arms up in the air. And here Andy Irvin could tie the score. No bother there. Six points all. Nicely fed out there to Fitzgerald. That was Willie Duggan who made the initial run. Penalty to Ireland for killing it. Ollie Campbell, who number six, dropped goals amongst his points as well. Campbell, has he got it straight? Yes, he has. Slattery goes in to provide a little bit of protection. And Ireland have won a priceless ball again. Ollie Campbell with a drop goal, hooking it round. The arm is up, and Campbell has struck again. That's a good bit of Irish scrummaging. The Scots have tended to break, and they're waiting to fall on the ball as soon as it touches the line. And it's a penalty against Laidlaw, because the referee decides the ball was still in the scrummage. Campbell then, it's high enough, and it's through. Well, that went down, and uh, they've been penalised, I think, for taking it down. Campbell then, bang, all the way. Bill Cuthbertson shoved out. Vrenik then. Oh, it looks pretty useful, and it is. Great breakup by McNeil. Keith Robertson covering near his own 22. But the referee deciding that there must have been a bit of obstruction of the ball. Campbell then tries to pull it round. He's done it enough. John Rutherford out to Rennick. That's the switch inside to Keith Robertson. Robertson once again. Trying to give his forwards a target. And uh, doing enough 
to make an Irishman go offside. Now, not so quick this time, just nice and easy. That's more like it. No bother. And there the scenes of complete euphoria here at Lansdowne Road as Ireland seal their first triple crown in 33 years. And here's the side with the two changes again in a side that's changed all season. Back comes Revalier in the second row and Michel Cremachi has propped forward. Scotland with the side that's looking for a repeat of a win two years ago. There, Derek White then, the man who's taken over from Eric Paxton and uh, he in turn, David Leslie. But with plenty of scoring potential out front. Martinez then. Again, the pressure on them. And a hand helps it back to give Scotland a penalty. About 35 metres. It's close. It's good enough. It's three points for Scotland. And there's that power again from Scotland. But still Martinez managed to win it. What a brilliant pass to Reid. Reid, can he score? Under the post he goes. A brilliant try. Lescabora. It's gone as high as it's gone far. Irvin upended by Blanco to Martinez. The end result, though, is a penalty. The ball played after the tackle. And a penalty to France. And no mistake with that one. But it was a tackle by Dantron. But a helping hand from France was spotted by the referee. Superb from Irvin. Midfield on the 22. Laidlaw goes for the break. Almost through. He is now 10 metres out. The drive by Scotland. The pick up by Deans. Still Scotland in possession. Superb work by the pack. Surely a try. Run of it through. Martinez from midfield. Perrier took his eye off it. And from a knock-on to a penalty decision because Reeve picked it up from the knock-on. Says what he thought about it in uh, Anglo-French, no doubt. And the penalty is 10 metres further downfield. Reeve never short of a word or two. From just inside the French half. That's looking good. And victory is Scotland's. Their first of this championship season, and certainly deserved in the end, coming from behind as they did. England with the same 15 as beat France, 27-15 in Paris a fortnight ago. Dusty Hare there, 28 points in his last two games against Wales. The Welsh team shows one change from the side who beat France 22-12 a month ago. Alan Donovan in for his Swansea clubmate David Richards. The Cardiff firm at half-back. A milestone for Graham Price, the most capped Welsh prop today. Now it's out again to Dodge, now it's Cusworth. Cusworth realising his centres were marked. Through the great chance here taken by Woodward. Out to here, Slemon, Slemon cutting inside. But seven or eight Welshmen there, Blakeway charges on. The big tank from Gloucester, Steve Smith. Smith to Slemon, it's a score. Mr. Palmard has given a penalty to England there. Clavery is possibly a little bit unlucky as Dusty Hare cleared his line just inside his own 22 metre. Clavery is chasing Herring across the field, dived and was judged to be a little bit late in using the elbow against Dusty Hare. Here then, got a lot of power into that one all the way. Was a breakthrough by Carlton. Carlton all the way through. What a remarkable try! Absolutely out of the blue. They're holding Holmes to Gareth Davis. Gravel out there to Donovan. Donovan once again hands off his man. Donovan inside there to Rodri Lewis. What a score! Yes, and there are plenty of fellas round here who think that Wales are still very much in this game as once again their breakaway trio very aggressive at the tail of the line out there and working well in concert Moriarty 
and Peter Winterbottom are having a bit of a do on the far side and really that's absolutely ridiculous and Moriarty has been penalised I think Winterbottom is going to be cautioned as well so that that's a clear indication by the referee still gives Dusty here the chance to kick his second penalty of the match and his 30th for England here then, stroke that one well oh it's a pip Rare old battle there between Colin Smart and uh, Graham Price, but foot up again against Peter Wheeler, and it's a free kick. Now they can't score direct, but uh, Gareth Davis from home is a magnificent drop goal, clean through. There it goes, spot on, but obstruction in the line out. Dusty here then, struck it well, all the way. That front row, the only section of the pack to stay unchanged this season. Six Lions with Welsh 15 with something to prove and led for the fifth time by Gareth Davis. Scotland are seeking an equal runners-up place in the 1982 Championship. One change from the French match, the new cap Jim Pollock of Gosforth on the right wing. A milestone for 26-year-old John Rutherford, now the most capped Scottish standoff of all time. Back there goes Bay at the bounce, beats him and it beats Laidlaw as well. And the Welsh forwards were really on the rampage there. And he stroked that one well, and it's a good one. And Baird bursting up the touchline. He's almost up to halfway. He's got Paxton inside him. Paxton is tearing, chased by Clive Rees. A marvellous tackle by the wing. Inside to Domes. Domes to Calder. What a try. But his first cap against the All Blacks in 78. This is Laidlaw. Misses out Rutherford, goes to Rennick, trying the drop goal. It looks straight enough. It's perfect. Scottish marking was good. Rutherford feeds it out. And Calder has burst clear again. Out to Rennick. Rennick running all the way. Ackerman trying to catch him. Rennick going all the way. What a magnificent try. Jim Aitken couldn't get a foot to it. Moriarty picks up. And the referee's whistle has gone for a penalty for offside. That looks a lot better. Oh, it's dead straight. And White there getting stood on because he's over on the wrong side. But Williams was going to get into here, but the referee gave a penalty for offside. Yes, he got good timing into that. His rhythm was good. It's all the way. They're in front of the Welsh post once again. Now it's Laidlaw. Out there to Rutherford. Rutherford to Rennick. Rennie gives it to Ervin to Pollock, the new cap has scored. Oh, what a moment for an international debutant. And the referee has given a penalty. No bother. It's a lovely strike by Deans, it's the pick up by White, White through. he's done it again 12 minutes to go and the Scots forwards have won a good ball their scrummy just held Rutherford trying the drop goal it looks good it is good Davies Davies on the loop that goes to Donovan that was another brilliant tackle by Rutherford inside there to Eddie Butler and Butler has scored they're holding looking for the penalty Baidler straight back to Rutherford, out there to David Johnston. Johnston going for the gap, and Johnston is through for a marvellous try. To try this conversion. Straight there. His fourth successful kick of the match. The referee's whistle goes for the end of the match.